Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of GenAI Vlog in regards to Anthropic API tutorial. So a previous part, we talked a little bit about how to invoke the API call from Anthropic. We install the package, we set up the API key. You can then make a plain API call by saying hello Claude, or you can ask something about a particular tool. So then we discussed that in order to use the tool to get the answer back from the tool, this is the body of the message that it needs to be, right? Here, the user asked a question, and then the chatbot actually responded, I need to use a tool. And then uh, we need to actually provide the answer of the result from using your tool back to the large language model all inside of this message body so that it understands, ah, the answer to your question is uh, the weather in San Francisco is 65 degrees. So as you can see, previous episode raises a question, how on earth do we stitch these two things together, right? What if users asking the question that is not just chit-chatting, that includes a usage of a particular tool how do we carry on this conversation? Where exactly do we generate these additional dictionary so that we can append in this message body to get our answer back, okay? So in this episode, we're gonna dive into just that. So let's take a look at this notebook uh, package API key. We're gonna get that all settled uh, to uh, increase the complexity of our problem. We're gonna introduce more complicated tools. And these are tools that's customizedly defined, right? So it can be customized by any developer. Uh, this is nothing but a list of dictionary. And these names are particular Python functions. For example, get customer information. That is a Python function, right? It is defined down here. The customer information perhaps is retrieved from uh, this is a small database here. I'm defining the small database as just a dictionary object inside of this function. Uh, but in reality, you can think about this as an API call, right? To DynamoDB table or Cosmos DB table, something like that. So uh, this table gives you a schema, name, email, phone number, things like that. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you query it, right? Dot get custom ID, and the ID is uh, whatever input argument that uh, is getting tossed in in this function, uh, and then it's going to retrieve a piece of information from this database. So you get the idea that it's a custom Python function that is arbitrarily defined in this notebook, right? Any developer can customize this and define whatever they want. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, I'm simulating this tool this way uh, just to showcase that this can actually be a small database in here. So get customer info, that is one tool, right? That is one tool. Uh, and then of course, uh, we can have more tools. Get order details, cancel order, right? These are basic tools that you can use. And again, these are not predefined by Anthropic. These are custom Python functions inside of this notebook. So the get order detail, presumably you have a small database, right? The small database here can be a list of orders, right? Product widget A, a product, gadget B, whatever, right? As a price, a status, something like that. And then user just need to toss in order ID, and then you'll be able to uh, grab the ID from here. So that's how things work. Uh, same thing goes, cancel order, right? Uh, if you cancel order, again, custom Python function here, return true and false. Uh, very simple, right? Very simple. Uh, and then these can be defined by engineers arbitrarily. So once we have tools defined, we throw that into this tools object, uh, then the tools is ready. Uh, later on, you can think about all this as API calls. You can think about all of these as servers. Uh, that leads to model context protocol, things like that. But for the time being, these are just custom functions locally in your Python environment. So once we have the Python functions, uh, that is just sitting here, uh, then we got a process, right? So process means there need to be a helper function here called process to calling. Uh, and then what it's doing is returning that particular function. So uh, you can think about it as a router, right? It's a router because there's the if statement. Uh, it gets that tool because the name 
is pointing to the name of that function. Uh, so uh, if you don't like this, you can kind of think about this as a wrapper. Uh, I believe in OpenAI or in some other SDKs, uh, there's a wrapper uh, that can actually register uh, this name and convert it into a Python function, or you can use a decorator in Python, things like that. So uh, there are a million ways to do this uh, for the time being and for the sake of simplicity. Uh, we're just going to define a simple Python function to return that function call based on the name. Uh, so uh, this is essentially a wrapper that converts a string into an actual callable function. So after that, we are good to go. Right? We have every building block ready. The remaining step is just how we stitch the conversation together, which is the heavy lifting. So I have a giant function here that documents how to stitch that conversation together with just one invocation, with just one user message once. That's it. So let's take a look at this uh, Python function, right? Again, just one API call. Let's make sure we all understand what is the logic here, right? We understand the logic of one API call with two calling, right? Then we can understand what's going on after that because it's actually not trivial okay so let's take a look at this so uh let's start with a user message okay so there's a user message or whatever user enters and that's the message it then creates a body right the message is the body it's a list of dictionary it says user and then here's a user message so this is conventional from the same structure as the sdk of openai great now let's make an api call Right, let's make an API call. So let's throw this message in here. Let's get some response back. And then here, uh, the initial response is going to be basically whatever the chatbot says. And we all know that it has not invoked any tools yet. It's going to say that I'm thinking I want to use a tool, but it hasn't invoked the tool yet. OK, so uh, the response is going to be, hey, you know, that's a stopping word, some sort of stop reason. Stop reason says it's a tool calling, things like that. OK, so uh, once you have that, that is going to be the condition of this while loop, right? If this response stop reason, it's tool use. And why do I say that? Because previous episode, we saw, right, we saw down here that if you just ask a question that is not chit-chatting, that is a question that's referring to a particular tool calling, it will actually say tool use in the type. That's important. That tells us that it's no longer chit-chatting. We need to make another tool calling, whether that's a function call or tool calling or calling a client or calling a server, whatever. That needs to be an additional step. So let's see what that additional step is. And uh, here need to be a while loop just because you want us to try a couple of times until it gets done, right? Uh, you can, of course, <laughs> have um, uh, some sort of a rule to break this while loop. Uh, I'll leave that to you. Uh, but for the sake of this example, uh, we're not going to go too crazy on that logic. For the sake of this example, we know already uh, that user is going to ask something about one of these tools, right? Get customer get order, cancel order, things like that, uh, then we know there's going to be a tool use somewhere here. So that's the while loop. So what's happening, right? We go into the content. We look for tool use. It's going to give us a name, give us the input. And that information tells us what tool to use. So once we have that information, dump it out in a JSON. So this allows us to debug, OK? Uh, but of course, we got to turn it into an actual function, right? So process tool call is going to take this tool name, which is a string, um, and then the tool input, which is the information required by that function call, right? Uh, here, what is required is uh, order ID, custom ID, whatever, right? You need some sort of information to retrieve something from the database. You can't just tell me retrieve anything, right? Then I'll just return the entire database, right? So you got to tell me something, right? Order ID or customer ID or whatever, right? So you get the idea. In that case, uh, that is going to be inside of uh, this information uh, to input. So uh, we have all that, right? We have all of that. Now the process to call is going to return us a function. This is the process to call function we talked about before. It's going to return an actual Python function. 
So once this return a function, we know this tool result is going to be that function with the input. So in other words, whatever this is returned, it's going to be the result, right? It's going to be the result. Why? Because whenever we return this function, we're not just returning a plain function, we're returning a callable function that this thing, uh, we pass the input argument in there, right? Customer ID, if you're getting customer info, order ID, if you're getting order detail, uh, and the same goes with cancel order. Uh, so we're actually going to run this function, right? It's callable at the moment. And it's going to return something back, which is the result of uh, this function call. So the function call happens on line 30. And whatever the result back, let's print it out as a tool result. And that allows us to debug easily. So now you get the idea, right? Now we have made the tool calling. We have the result. Let's append the result back to the message body. So let's go back to the previous collab and let's take a look at the message body. I remember that in the message body, we have this giant monster here, right? Uh, user asks a question. He says, hey, I think I need to use a tool. And then there's something happened in between these two dictionaries that's not telling us yet, right? Before line 44 and line 45, there's an intermediary step here, right? Otherwise, how do you know 65 degrees, right? How do you know that? Well, you know that because in between line 44 and line 45, you have run the tool. You have called the function. And that is what's happening here for line 30. So the functionality of line 30 should be between line 44 and line 45 in this previous notebook. So once you get the result, you can then append it back to the body, right? So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're saying, hey, look, the assistant says something. Uh, it's going to say that I think I want to use this tool. And then we have the tool result. Well, let's get it back, right? Let's get it back. So here, the message body has three dictionaries, right? Number one, from the user. Number two, from the assistant. Uh, that's the reasoning part, right? That's the thinking strategy. And then we made the tool calling outside of this body, right? And then we append it to uh, this uh, message uh, list of dictionary here. Now you can then send this message inside of the chat message doc create to get a response back. And whatever this response you're getting back is going to be the final response. So that's it. That is one invocation with tool calling. So you get the idea. Now uh, let's see how this is used. Can you tell me the email address of customer C1? OK, so let's see what's happening. Uh, that's a user message, right? That's the beginning of the print statement. Uh, and then it says, ah, stop reason is to use. And it printed out a bunch of stuff that it doesn't know what the email address yet, right? It doesn't know that yet. What it knows is I need to use a tool. The name of the tool is get customer info. Type is to use. So now we're confident that this is no longer just chit chatting. This is to usage. So it used a tool, right? That's the input of a tool. It invoked the tool. It gets a response back from the tool. So at this moment, we see this result here. That means that function is being called, right? That means that function, get customer info, it's being called. And we are retrieving customer ID to be C1 exactly. So what is our database? Let's go up to our small database here in get customer info. C1 is John Doe, right? Email is john.example.com. Phone number is this one. So it got it, right? It got it. Once it got it, uh, let's print out the result of the tool calling. So we're confident that it indeed made an API call, right? Otherwise, how would Anthropic know that this is the customer information? There's absolutely no reason that Anthropic will drop billions of dollars to fine tune their language model to uh, remember this crap. Right? There's no reason they would do that. This has to come from tool calling, and this is the logic that they do it. Once we have this result, what do we do? We then toss it back to the LLM and then 
uh, we get the response back. And we know that we got it because here the stop reason says and turn. So we know that, aha, we have the information. Let's stop the thinking process, right? Whatever we're doing here, I'll retrieve customer info or customer C1, blah, blah, blah. Whatever this is going on here, let's stop, right? We got the tool, let's stop. And then uh, the email address for customer C1 is whatever, right? Uh, and then the type is text, done. Uh, that's the final answer. So that is the logic of how to take a detour from chit-chatting to tool calling and how to get the response back. Now let's take a look at another example. What is the status of order O2, right? What is the status of order O2? Again, uh, tool calling, right? Tool calling. And then here it says, uh, get order details. Uh, and then the type is to use. So it knows that we're using a tool uh, and then that's the input. So we run a function that it actually give us this result. Say O2, right? That's gadget B, quantity one, price 49.99 and status is processing. Sends it back, the stop reason says enter. So let's finish running the tool and the final response back is exactly what we want. Awesome. And you can of course do cancel order. It's the same strategy. You get the idea, so on and so forth. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.